Hello and welcome to another event of the BIM Zero series. Today's, today's event will be what is multi-platform and what is multi-sectoral. I am your host, Daniel Monteiro, and this event is developed by BIM Freelance and sponsored by BIM Week and BIM Campus. Today's speaker will be Gustavo Ferreira. Gustavo Ferreira is an architect, engineer, and urban planner, as well as, an, as an, a technologist. He's also the creator of the International Master BIM Manager and the CEO of BIM Freelance. So today we will talk about multi-platform and multi-sectoral. I thank all uh, who are watching this event right now and a special thanks to Gustavo Ferreira for being here. I will pass him the word and we'll start the presentation right away with the question, what is multi-platform? Thank you for having me. Uh, multi-platform uh, is, the, is the approach of the technology using every tool to create value because we are creating value for, for the clients. That's the paradigm of the future of the life cycle. And when we are creating value for the clients, we need uh, all the systems that we are uh, available in the market because we are in a, in a market economy, in a consumer's market economy, in a capitalist uh, economy. And then there is initiatives right there and software makers and other uh, institutions, systems, uh, companies, corporations, elsewhere there is technology that you can use and there is uh, competition. And then we have different systems for different purposes and different cases. We need to identify that and for this uh, approach, we need every system. Uh, only one system is, is not the, is the opposite to this uh, approach. It's only one platform. Okay, we are creating value. That's uh, a collaborative concept. Okay, so is this concept important for the public or professionals only? It's complicated for the public to understand, but uh, the public uh, is the are the, the ones who rent a home, who buy a home, who develop an investment, who creates a business over uh, facilities, uh, retail, uh, elsewhere. And then it's important to perceive that with only in a scope, we only a little part of the technology, one system has uh, failures or has uh, a, um, a limited scope. And then with all the technology combined, because technology is, is increasing the performance day by day, you have an approach to create the whole value you can, you can get to the client. The public, yes. it's important to perceive that multi-platform gets value. Uh, the details are, are, a little, are a little tricky for, for them because it's technology, it's in AICO, I don't know nothing. We try to explain the details if uh, the watchers can, can know something more about multi-platform. Okay, so with this of uh, technology and multi-platform, we're talking about systems, but um, a lot of architectural schools call it software, right? So yeah. what is the point here? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, we are both, uh, Daniel, you and me, architects, and then we, you, uh, we, we have the, the you put and you, we, we signal uh, architecture as, the, as the, the problem, but civil engineering is also the problem because of the background of these schools and considering more architecture because it's art. It's considered art in 75% of the world and not, and not engineering, not technology. And then, you know, consider that software is only something like you, a procedure that you, that are like to, to full to fill an spread sheet, you know, or your IRS, your 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 taxes, is not the same. A system must be known, especially with a semantic, and then architectural schools and other and other schools, construction, etc., uh, and are not understanding the point. The point is, system must be known to move all across, all along, a vertical, horizontal in the system and decide which is the right system. That's why the multi-platform needs, at least the, the people that are skilled, needs two systems to per se, to compare. Because if you can compare, 
uh, you only know one system, it's impossible to know what is better or what is expected to be better for other systems, you know, too, and maybe other systems has uh, some uh, performance and features, some functionalities that are important. Right, so their vision is not valid anymore, right? No, not at all. Uh, the question is now is completely systemic. BIN is not only BIN. BIN is IPD, BIN is value, BIN is integrated, as, as we talk in the in, in multi-sectoral, is now integrating so well because there is software there, there is visions from companies that has the planning and the, and the collaboration between architects, civil engineers at the, at the time of creating the sector in a city. That was a, it's quite astonished. And the IPD can be can be implemented there. And you know, this is not the, 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 the vision. We are not talking about, we are talking about the public because we need public to perceive that something is, um, there is a situation in the university about technology. Is don't understand which is the, the role of the technology and then don't deliver the value of this technology applied to the projects. And this is not only a question of architecture of, or civil engineering, it's a question of architects, okay? But it's a question of the client, it's a question of the society, it's a question of the objectives of the people. The people request us to create the architecture and build this architecture and operate this architecture because it has some, some, uh, uh, some point to do that, some business, some matter, some, uh, you know, non for profit uh, uh, request for that. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's compare this to, to CAD systems. In CAD, uh, the winner per se was AutoCAD, you know, only one yeah. system, the mostly used system. In the future, will there only be one platform? I guess not. Impossible. Uh, the, maybe one, one of the solutions, or, or maybe uh, we, we are talking about only one solution, but do we don't perceive the, the, the big picture and don't see that system are not only for building, are for infra, are for industrial, and there is several systems. No, no not at all. Uh, in AutoCAD, the question is, we don't have computers. We don't have drawings. We draw, we start to draw in the computer and we share something that is the, the draw, the drawing, the layout. And then the PDF, one of the best achievements in, in the history of the world, but you know, it's only, it's only something printed there. <laughs> it's not information there. And then this is a, a, the past era of the IC is devolving from the, from the drawing table to the computer, you know? But now it's not the same, the, now it's not the same. Uh, it's not a DWG, it's not a drawing from AutoCAD to with, uh, that you share with the others. That's more complex than, than that. We share the information, we need interoperability. And this concept of interoperability is open being, and then this, there is no only solution. There is a standard and we share all the information, but this is not only a, a brand or not only a one solution. We share the information and that's the, the question. It's not the... It's not this one. One platform uh, has not uh, is, is pointless in this case. Okay, I uh, I understand. So, modeling systems uh, were, uh, for different purposes, right? Yes. So, um, regarding this, I ask you: uh, Will there be an open source BIM environment? Oh my God, <laughs> will be great. Uh, maybe some actors in the world, be tech can do that, but it's so complex. So, uh, uh, it's, you know, uh, these guys from the big tech is, uh, has a simple, a simple business with a large scale of the solution. We have a complex, very complex system with a little scale solution because we need to implement, and there is not only one solution for the cloud, for the Gmail, and I don't know, uh, you name it. And, is, is, I, I guess it's not impossible. We have open bin, and maybe there is some service that is uh, open source and can be created, but you know, must be evolved. We have the, the, the example of, of Linux. Uh, Linux, the operating system is developed um, for free, is, is something that is shared, is open source, everybody contributes, it's, it's completely 
uh, up to date. And then maybe in the future, but uh, usually the expertise comes from the software makers. The software makers are not only programmers, are people that from the sector that create something that see that has value. And then the know-how is so important, not the capabilities of programming. For the capabilities, Google will be the winner. But the question is, don't know nothing about the eco sector and the semantics is how it works. That's uh, an important thing. Okay. okay. So to professional, how does one how does one know which system is better? The 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 tricky the tricky question that which is better, better for what? Better for the community. We uh, we analyze that in in the big one on one events here in the in the platform. You you uh, people what uh, have these videos uh, on our YouTube channel, and and you see that is a lot of things to think about. And there is a professional, a CTO for the AECO that is called BIM manager that is deciding which system is for which purpose. So that as you as you mentioned uh, before. And there is no uh, a better solution. There is a right solution for the right problem. And this creates value. We are talking about value all the time. It's the client that creates the value, not ourselves. It's not my intentions. It's not my needs. It's not my uh, skills. If you need more skills, you need to acquire these skills and go to another system. Because you are an architect, you need to develop the architecture. Uh, you are more comfortable, maybe you, you can lose uh, clients. But which is the better system? There is four platforms on um, and building, that is Revit, Archicad, Plan, Ecosim, but there is three or four pretenders that are there creating something, uh, maybe a little solution, maybe only from, for example, there is uh, one application from Spain, from Italy, Edificius, or is uh, CP Architecture, that has a bin server, I don't know, and it's connected with other solutions that are the cloud and solving other questions, not only architecture and, and engineering questions. Uh, you know, and infrastructure, there is open building, open road, sorry, and InfraWorks and, and Istram and Nova Point. And in uh, industrial sector, uh, we're talking about the sectors in the, in the, in the next block, um, is uh, open plants and smart plants. And all of this must be connected. It's not only building, it's, it's infra. That's, that's the whole, the big picture. If you don't see the bigger picture uh, and you don't see the big picture in your, in, your, in your sector because you are integrated, architects are not in the field of infrastructure and uh, in, not in the part of industrial or not completely, not, are the, not the most important uh, stakeholders in the, in the industrial. You know? Uh, I would I would like to to remind everyone watching here that uh, uh, Beam Freelance YouTube channel, besides the the, the Beam Zero series which we are doing uh, right now, uh, has also the the, the videos the, the the recordings of another series the Beam One on One series which compares uh, 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 soft Beam softwares against against each others each other. There are already several several uh, events uh, recordings uh, out there, uh, mainly like Revit versus Open or uh, Open versus Open Buildings. So please go check that out in Beam Freelance YouTube page and subscribe for more content. Now, continuing continuing on, uh, I would like to to go to to skills and abilities. Now, which profile need this, this uh, tech skills and abilities, I ask you. Uh, the, the modelers are the main profile. The modelers maybe have been architect, have been interior architect, have been construction manager with uh, more collaborative skills or more modeling skills. You know, authoring is a different question from engineering interoperability and, and modelers. But, uh, you know, uh, modelers, uh, are limited in the in the in the market if they only know how to model in one platform, but if they know how to model in two or three platforms, are completely engaged because there is a 
there is an important question for professionals right now on BIM, is if you bid on one platform, you are an architect, okay, but only for this platform. Because if you don't have, you are not skilled at all in one platform, you are out from a project of this platform, you know? For example, somebody from Archicad uh, don't go to the projects of Revit. And somebody from Revit don't go to the projects of open buildings. And it's a, it's a real problem because this, this, um, these platforms usually has different solutions and uh, these platforms are there for uh, 30 years, 20 years, at least, okay? And then create uh, some values, some clients, some companies, some profiles, and then you are out from this market. You are an architect and has a limited market, okay? You are not architect, project manager, construction manager, and you lost opportunities as a model. On the other side, there is experts and there is uh, BIM managers, uh, of, of course, being consultant that are the implementers of the technology that needs to know. Okay, so so this, this BIM experts and BIM managers you talked about, uh, they, you said that in, Basically said that they need multi-platform uh, uh, knowledge, right? A multi a multi-platform approach. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. As I talk, uh, as I talk in 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 the presentation, when I talk about the BIM curriculum and the BIM profiles, uh, for the experts is needed to know at least two platforms to compare, and this is a quite interesting thing from the BIM curriculum. Because if you can't compare, you, you can't organize a company. That is the, the mission of an expert. Or you can't uh, implement in a project because you have only the vision of a one technology. Don't know some features, some systems, or some situation arising. You don't recognize the situation to apply one system and the capabilities of one system because are are, are creations and you need to know. Okay. And that's that's the question. Yeah, uh, the BIM curriculum needs uh, some an expert needs to know to, to have a broad picture and need at least to know which are the parts of the system. And that's the question that uh, is uh, is um, is mandatory to know at least two systems to be an expert. And the BIM managers. And the BIM managers are um, know a lot of things about a lot of things because need to be a technologist before to center on the, on the people, because we are talking about the people as being managers. We are not talking about technology. Technology is only a requisite. Technology is only the first step, the second step, maybe the third step, because it's hard to implement certain technologies with the prohibition, but we're talking about people. And being managers need to know these uh, two uh, systems and know how to implement and how to see. And I mean, experts are working, uh, works inside the company. But a BIM manager is working in the project and then need all the resources, all the technological resources and need to know in, in detail all the parts of a BIM environment, it, whatever sector. And you know, it's quite, quite important. The multi the multi-platform is completely mandatory for a BIM manager. Okay. And finally, what about BIM consultants? The BIM consultants are the implementers, are consulting for clients, for investment funds, are the players that impl implement technology uh, in the owners organization and the uh, asset management uh, companies. And now it's, uh, it's the business right now. It's not build and sell, it's build and operate. It's like a factory. Um, usually a company uh, builds a factory to produce something but operates the factory because the question is the point is operate the, the facility that's the the position of a of a beam manager and the integrate and implement the supply chains and then for that is uh, are, are the same beam managers are beam consultants are beam managers that decides to implement the technology with some skills about people most of uh, more than technology but need the same stage the same technological uh, standard uh, high standard as a BIM manager, for sure. Okay, now reg regarding this multi-platform and IPV, what is the value for the client? Well, with multi-platform, you have a situation, you have a solution. You know which is the solution, 
you know how to apply, people are skilled in, in for example, the BIN curriculum, 35 somebody to work, uh, uh, to work in Archica the 23, and then you change to Revit 2021, and this guy is the same because something is needed, you change the system, but the people are skilled, no problem at all. In fact, uh, when you learn one system and the other system at the same time with the BIM curriculum, you can learn the same at the same time. It's quite an advantage because it's not uh, like uh, the curve is one for the first uh, in BIM environment you learn and the second is one and you have two. No, 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 it's, it's different. It's 50% of the effort. And then you are then arise the comparison, and you know what a beam system is. And this knowledge from the modeling uh, part is, is quite important. If IPD, the, the clients are benefit, and the value chain is, is better if you have solution that solves problems and get decision making. And then if you have the technology solution, you achieve the goal you need on modeling. The modeling is not the is not the problem, you know, because it's a barrier. If you choose the wrong system, for example, for retail, and there is no a large mall, and you have uh, one thousand or fifteen thousand like a company in in the world that works in in one hundred countries, it's a real problem. It's a real problem to choose the the wrong solution because you are applying retail. For example, with the worst system for uh, objects, uh, parametric objects, and most of the retail is based on the capabilities to create objects and to um, fabricate objects, okay, to make objects. And then is a is the the is the worst for the company and is created for a with uh, because uh, the the lack of skills, the lack of knowledge about uh, how a system works and the risk of the choices. Uh, this don't create value for the company, value chain. And that's the, the whole point for the question. We are, if the BIM manager, the BIM consultant are not doing the job, the, the client lost money. And we are, the, we, are the, we are guilty, always guilty, you know? The technology is always the, 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 the one who pays the price. Well, it's a, it's a, you choose, but in the, in the IPD, there is a bonus. If you create value, you earn your own bonus, even the big manager. And then it's quite interesting that you see that there's a risk, and but you share the risk with the team. And when you create as a whole, and as big manager, as a modeler, etc., you have value at technology level, skills, abilities, and so on. And you apply the system and avoid mistakes, avoid loss and waste. You create value and you are rewarded for doing that. Okay, but for the client, uh, so for the client, the, the, the one of the major risk is to only have one platform, right? It's, uh, simplifying is a risk because you have only one, one option. One option is bad to decide something, okay? okay? It's limited and usually don't match the expectation of every case. And that's, that's the question, not on one platform, it's options. It's uncertainty. One uh, platform is uncertain to solve the whole problem of the whole question of the echo. If we have the, 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 the system solved and we have only one solution, we are very happy to use only one solution. But you know, life is not like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the next sector. Uh, which is the, the what is multi-sectoral. Okay, so uh, firstly, of course, uh, I would like to, you know, hmm. dig into the ICO in industry and uh, what is so-called the, the multi-sectoral and why is important for us to know what it is. It's an, it's an important point to establish why we are talking about multi-sectoral and why it's, it's so important. Uh, for example, if you are a urban, uh, a urban administrator, uh, somebody that has uh, polit in politics uh, or the mayor of a city or somebody that is working in the, in the, in the administration of the land and of the, the, the city and of the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole built environment, 
uh, you are interested in the multisectoral because you need to perceive that the collaboration from the first time you plan something, you need to integrate every actor right there, you know? And then it's, it's important to perceive that uh, because if without this collaboration, you don't create value for the, for the city. The client of the city is the people. It's create value for the people right there, create jobs, but jobs is transforming in some city that works to do the business, okay? And then it's different kind of thing, but when you are building something like as a as an developer, you need this integration to ensure that everything is working good. We lost a lot of time doing things isolatedly, like in the IC, that, that's not a problem of the people. I guess it's a problem of technology. We talk about the collaborative culture and the, and the capabilities of, of the technology to collaborate. But you know, uh, these this, uh, people don't understand right now, but we'll understand in the future with this kind of awareness that is possible architects, civil engineers, urban planners, administrators, um, and so on, and the whole bunch of uh, companies, um, suppliers, uh, providers, etc is connected, but from the first time of the urban development. It's quite interesting, this thing, but it's impossible without civil engineering mixing with building sector, uh, especially South Force engineers, and without the integration with the industrial sector. A lot of buildings seems to be, seems to be factories, you know? Factories to live, not, not the concept, it's a factory because it has huge services huge services for 400 uh, units or something like that is huge buildings, you know? This building seems to be in part as a factory. And then you need this integration to create a better product, to create value. And then multi-sectoral uh, creates the collaboration, but not uh, at the at, um, building uh, level, building sector level or uh, infrastructure level, create the whole, bunch of engagement, whatever is needed, whatever speciality, whatever sector is mixed, uh, is a mixed collaboration, but not mixed. <laughs> Each one has their duty, but uh, is mixed in one collaborative project. And this collaboration is creating a joint uh, organization and it's working so good to solve the problems of everyone for the client, okay? Always, that's the vision. Okay, so so it seems like multisectoral is very important, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, let me ask you uh, about the multi the sector part of multisectoral. What are these sectors, and uh, what are the IECO subsectors? Per se? Yeah, IECO subsectors uh, are this uh, building sector is more centered in, in on buildings, retail, um, okay? Um, there is an infrastructure sector is more in uh, roads, bridges, rail, railway, railways, um, metro lines, uh, ports, you know, large uh, facilities and industrial, you know, a plant or an industrial facility or utilities. These three uh, subsectors, uh, are working uh, at the only three subsectors that there is relationship between one each other and this kind of relationship constitute uh, is is uh, constitutes constitutes um, several specialities inside one sector or the other for example architects that, that develop uh, factories for companies you know uh, or retail uh, malls that is more specialized from the from the field of building. In the case of factories, is more from the field of industrial. You know, there is uh, several sectors are building infra and industrial and subsectors. There is relationship between one each other. Okay, so projects like uh, airports, stadiums, transfer transfer centers, chemical plants, and others, those are most multi sectoral. Completely. For sure, only the project and with the relationship of the of the built environment of the sectorization and the development 
of Sanson uh, are completely multisectoral. Uh, at an urban level, when a sector is developed, is this the right time for a multi-sectoral design, like uh, like in early design stage and urban urban planning? Yeah, that's the that's the most important in the life cycle. There is one 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 time when the IPD must be applied is the early design stage at the urban level. It's complex for sure, but there is a property there. There is people that has rights there and then integrate this project, the stakeholders, you know? And then this uh, experience to uh, working, uh, working civil engineers with architects, with uh, industrial engineers, and the whole bunch of people right there with the, the city, with the, the authorities uh, deciding with, uh, you know, those who defend the, the public interest, and those who defend the private interest at the same time and join together and decide which is the right point. But decide together is not a unilateral decision, something that says we establish here this, this regulation. The regulation must be implemented in the sector within a style guidelines, I say, something like that. Is a collaborative effort that creates the, the documents and the, and the regulations that are needed to increase the value of the codes. The codes are not uh, wrong. The codes are applied to everything that you know, do you know. Now you know. Multisectoral is the relationship between a, a metro uh, line and a transfer center and the connection with a building and the connection with the, with the streets and, and all, about, all around the, the facility and now created this kind of value that you are not designing the metro line without knowing where is the highway and how the building is developed and which are the problems of a, um, a 50 stores building, a storage building is, uh, is going to, <laughs> to settle over the, the metro line is quite complicated. And then civil engineers are there and also architects and also structure engineers to decide that this completely a multi-sectoral collaboration and even it's not when the building is developing. You are developing while the sector is developing. And then it's a great advantage for the city to meet all the people together during, I don't know, maybe one year, two years, three years. And you are interacting with each other. Even um, and owners that has different facilities are interacting together and creating agreements and creating aliases for creating value for them. And that's the whole business uh, development that arises from a sector. And it's completely multi-sectoral because this is the certainty. Multi-sectoral avoids uncertainties that are created. All uh, we know these uncertainties for a long time and the and multi-sectoral avoids the collaboration in a multi-sectoral way, avoids the problems or urbanization. That's one important question. Okay, so does this have relation to the um, to the uh, BIM slash jazz? Yeah, uh, yeah. The this is something that is uh, over the building, the infra, and the industrial bin environments, and we center in our little bin. You know, is our platform and doing our job, and is the urban level, and the urban level are GIS application that. Something coming from BIM to GIS and something coming from GIS to BIM, but this good are different purposes and different approaches. But you know, now is mature, are there. We, we have these applications, this environment, these systems there, and we are using the, the we have this, these achievements right now available for IPD projects at urban level in sectors, you know, even in cities, but cities most. Is more complicated to manage if you have not some scope that is limited, even for 1,000 uh, proper, proper owners or properties or, or 2,000, I don't know. But you need to sectorize, you need to limit to limit the projects, but the whole bunch of projects can be in, um, in an integration at the city level, at the local level. When you control the local level, the, the limit to the, to the built environment of 13 administrative environment or area, you control every sector 
and you have the data for every sector, and then you decide how to use your your powers as a polity, as uh, a city, as the the administrator of the city, to give something and create value for the whole, create a, a project for the city. From these projects, multi-sectoral projects, comes the opportunities for the city, for the employment, for the business. It's a society that is innovative, has a lot of data and creates innovation because it has the data and has the engagement and the collaboration. And it's quite interesting to see how it works in the future, in 10 years, 20 years. What are we expecting to do? We, uh, I, I guess it's an enormous creation of value for the whole uh, society of, of the place, of this, of this city, local city, local place. Yes, because uh, from the, the multi-sectoral to, to this relationship between BIM and GIS, this is a kind of revolution, isn't it? Completely. We discovered that somebody has the vision to create this kind of software, this uh, piece of software, as a BIM manager from, from Foster, well-known, the Tiffredo says, piece of software, because there is a lot of piece of software out there and you recognize and you use, but um, this is not a question of software. This a vision for creating the collaborative environment, not only for an application, even the whole environment of a, of a software company. And even this can integrate with other software environments. And you know, there is a lot of things out there created by several actors that can engage one each other, can meet one each other. It's quite important, quite relevant within GIS at the urban level because it's the starting of everything. It's the starting of really defining a project that uh, match the, the expectation of the business uh, at the at the city level at the at the the whole land is impossible to establish the connection with the uh, stakeholders but at sectoral level at, in a sector in uh, in the city you can establish this relationship with the right people the skilled people civil architects uh, industrial engineers and the whole bunch of people in companies you have a real incredible opportunity to develop innovation because the innovation is created because the, the matter, the, the, the opportunity. When you create a different kind of elevator is because you have the need to create for a project that you see that is important to create this elevator. Okay, and then the company has something that comes from the project that where they work and then invest something to create this value for sell elsewhere and, and good luck with that. Okay, okay. Now for owners, okay. Um, multisectoral is related to an extremely good collaboration, right? In regards for, to for sure. Uh, uh, we, we talk about collaborative culture, I guess uh, in the Bean Zero, there is um, somebody who will talk about that. But without this in collaborative culture and engagement from the people, it's impossible to create the value. We need to perceive that the client is the, is not the chief, but is the objective right now. We are creating value for their business. We don't know uh, the business, but we are set to be part of a project. And then we are set that the business of the client is our business right now. That's, that's a different perspective from the industry that I am, a a contractor or I am a supplier or I am an architect and center in my office, in my company, in my developments, in my investments. That's not the point. We need to create our value, creating value for them. Okay. 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 Now, what is the relationship with IPD, you know, from the early design stage to even the urban level? When you have the, the IPD centered on the early design stage, and then if you create this collaboration, this value, this, uh, this uh, vision of the whole bunch of people are right there that certain solutions arise and create more value. That is, is important for us as an architects and, and professionals because we, we, want, we like to, to earn more money for our job. And you earn money. It's, it's like to be to be a stakeholder of a company. You know, you are a stakeholder of a project of a project entity. And then when you create value, you earn more, more money. It's an incentive. It's a bonus. And then for the IPD, when this multi-sectoral is produced 
for example, in, a, in the development of a urban sector or uh, in, a, in an airport when you have all the people together, but not isolated, only sharing some kind of information, but not deciding nothing. Cooperation is not the same than collaboration. If the people are not skilled at doing cooperation and not collaboration, and the, and the difference can be that cooperation is, from my point of view and my position, I'm doing the job, but I'm not interested in your objective. Cooperation is completely against IPD because I do my job and it doesn't matter to me if I need to change something or, or change my mind and share with the others. I cooperate with my business. No, you cooperate increasing or innovating or creating something that you don't knew before to great value. If you go to the urban level, is clearly the, the stage for a multi-sectoral collaboration is the only choice. If you go to airports, if you go to plants, if you go to uh, factories, you need this multi-sectoral vision. And then architects must integrate with the other sectors and understand. And we have the, the collaboration in the software is now um, is now some issue, but uh, it's better solved by some companies, software companies than others. Uh, some companies isolate the solutions, but technology is not really the, the most important thing. We evolve, uh, we achieve the, the, the software solutions for the people, for the public, for the owners, for the investment, uh, for the investment funds and, and the assets that we develop. Uh, the question is technology is increasing day by day and we need the cases to do that. It's completely open and we have the scope to solve the whole problem, no matter what. Okay, so I believe we've, we've, we've talked everything about uh, multi-platform and, and multi-sectoral. So I believe this is it. You have anything you, have anything you want to add? Or no, I I guess it's not really this being zero for the public really, but uh, by but somebody uh, keep an eye or keep an eye on on that because uh, the question of value was uh, fifty percent of the whole concept, and then says okay I understand now with combination with the IPD that is that is the is the, the is the focus right here. And I guess I, I try to explain the public, but the sector, but the, the people from the industry to understand and the public to understand the value. The people from the sector understand the collaboration, the collaboration challenge, and the people from the public to understand the value that we are creating and the people must do some kind of job and some decisions for them. And trust only in decisions that creates value. Don't trust on something that is done, something that is, is uh, creating mistakes and don't trust anybody. Uh, try the people to explain you as a client why they are creating value and demonstrating you. Okay, so thank you Gustavo for, uh, for being here, here with us, from, for, for answering these questions and, and for the whole presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Before we, uh, we end the session, I would just like to remind everyone watching that BIM Freelance YouTube channel will have all the rec recordings from the BIM Zero series, as well as the BIM One-on-One -on -one series. Please check, check that out because it's, uh, it's a lot of interesting content and uh, register for the next events. So, bye Thank everyone. Bye-bye.